Let's try to solve this. And we are going to solve this not by the method that we, I mean, we'll, we're still going to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors and all that. But uh, we're going to solve this not by the method that we've learned before, but rather making some analogy. Okay. So, uh, this looks a lot like, just think about this as like y. So y prime is something times y, okay? And I think if this is a number, most of you can just tell me the answer right away. So if this was a number like y prime equals to 5y, what's the solution? y is? Huh? No, oh, come on, you, you know how to do this. What function gives you 5 in front if you differentiate? <laughs> I don't know, Chief. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> X to the 6. No, it's e to something, right? Yeah, e to what is e? 5t. Yeah. Did anyone say this? Oh, you said it. Okay, so I, I, I didn't hear you. Sorry. So it's this. All right. Uh, so, so you, you see that if, if it's like y prime equals to r y, then, then this should be r. And, and actually, if you plug in y of zero in here, you see that this is one. So y of zero is c. So your your c is the initial value. So, in other words, the, the, the general solution of this is like y equals to y0, the initial value, times e to the rt. Okay. But this time it's a matrix. Okay? It's a matrix. So, it's hard to think this way, but uh, some audacious mathematician looked at this and said, okay, let's say that the solution of this is y equals to e to the a t times y zero. Okay? You see the parallel here? Now the difference is uh, because we're Working with column vectors, uh, you can't multiply column vectors to a two by two matrix. So you don't you don't want to put the column vector should be always behind the two by two matrix. Uh, you, yeah, you can't multiply two by two column vector times two by two. It doesn't work. So you, you have to move this to the, to the end. Okay, but apart from that annoyance, I'm really claiming that the way you solve a scalar value is exactly the same as taking exponential of a t and you multiply by y zero. But then immediately you run into this question. So, so uh, let, let, me, let me tell you how, how easy this looks on, on the face of it, although if you want, want to calculate it, it's a lot of work. But look at what I'm saying. I'm saying that the solution of this is x1, y1 is e to the power of 1, negative 7, negative 5, 3, t times initial value, done. <laughs> That's the solution, right? Yeah, however, we don't feel like we know what, oh, this should be x2. We don't feel like we, we know what this means, right? Why? Why does this look so, so strange? Yeah, because we've never seen an exponentiation of a matrix. What does this mean? Right? That's something that we've never seen before, right? Okay. So any ideas? How how can we define this? Take the determinant or something. 
No. Can you split the E up into two different E's? No. It's not like, uh, not like I mean, e I see what you're e trying to do. E squared is E times C, so can you define it like that? But that doesn't work here. Any other ideas? Yes? Huh? Do the thing that we did with A to the N? Not E to the N, E to the X. What is this same as? What is this same as? One plus X plus one over two factorial X squared, one over three factorial X cubed. Okay, so what, what is that? That's the Taylor series of E to the X, right? So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to say that E to some matrix, well, now we have to make everything in terms of matrix. So instead of 1, we have to promote that into I. And then put A plus 1 over 2 factorial A squared plus 1 over 3 factorial A, a cubed. OK? It's an easier way, though, right? Huh? It's an easier way, though, right? Is this the easier way? No, it's not necessarily, but it kind of gives you a bird, bird's eye view of what's really happening. Okay? So, uh, therefore, if you have a T there, yeah, uh, since it's not the easier way, but it just gives you a deeper understanding, I don't usually include it in my lectures, but today I just felt like I should explain this to you. Okay? So, if you put the T there, you get this, and indeed, if you differentiate e to the at, and if you differentiate this right side, you can check that e to the at does satisfy this. So then if you say y is e to the at, indeed, y prime is a times y. <coughs> you, you see my point? See, we're trying to solve this. y prime is a times y, right? Look at this. If you take this definition on the right side and differentiate by t, 2 comes down, 3 comes down, and if you write down what, what you get, the resulting series is exactly this. Assuming that your a can be, uh, a is invertible. Okay? So, so that's what you have. Okay? All right. So... Now we're talking. We, we now have a good definition of this, which even satisfies what we want. It satisfies exactly what we want. So that means we have to be able to compute this. Now, uh, just to make things slightly easier, let's rewrite this into a summation notation. It's the summation of n equals to 0 through infinity of uh, 1 over n factorial a t to the nth power. Okay. But that same as sigma n equals to 0 through infinity, 1 over n factorial. A is this matrix 1, negative 7, negative 5, 3 times to the nth power t to the nth power. OK? So if we can compute that, and once you compute that, you multiply by the y0, that will be the solution. Right? And sorry, this doesn't really give you an easier solution. It just gives you a deeper understanding of what's happening. OK. So let's actually proceed to calculate that. Right? So how, how do you calculate? 1, negative 7, negative 5, 3 to the nth power. You need to do what? What do you have to do? Yeah, you need diagonalization, right? You have to find the eigenvectors and eigenvalues. All right, uh, because I, I uh, actually chose this question because we've done this calculation before, right? So we already know what the two eigenvectors and eigenvalues are. So I'm going to quote our earlier result, which said that 
if you multiply 1, negative 1, you get 8 times 1, negative 1. And if you have 1, negative 7, negative 5, 3, and you multiply 7 and 5, you get negative 4, 7, 5. Okay, so that was the eigenvector eigenvalue calculation that we have done before, uh, which is just subtracting lambda off the diagonal, take the determinant to find the lambda values 8 and negative 4, and you have to find these eigenvectors. Uh, so let's assume that you've done that. Now, how do you get P? You put these two side by side, right? So what do you do? You do, um, you're going to do 1, negative 7, negative 5, 3, and you put 1, negative 1, and 7, 5 side by side, then the resulting thing is it's going to be 1, 7, negative 1, 5, same P matrix times the diagonal matrix, which is the d diagonal values being the eigenvalues. So this is what you have. And therefore, if you move this to the other side as inverse, here's what you see. 1, negative 7, negative 5, 3 is equal to 1, 7, negative 1, 5, 8, 0, 0, negative 4. And then 1, 7, negative 1, 5, inverse. And, and uh, you also know how to calculate inverse of a matrix, right? It's 1 over 80 minus BC, and you have to flip, swap 1 and 5, and you have to put, uh, you have to negate these, right? But let's do that later, okay? So, so we have this. Now, what does that mean? That means if I take the nth power of this thing, the P and P inverses inside cancels away, and it's just N right here power of n goes right here. And therefore, I can now replace this thing by that. Okay. So now let's see what that is. It's going to be n equals to 0 through infinity, 1 over n factorial. Let, let me just rewrite this one as, let's just call this as p and this as p inverse so that uh, we don't have to write it too much. So it's going to be p times 8 to the n, 0, 0, negative 4 to the n, p inverse times p to the n. OK, so I, I just copied this over there. Oh, I also did one more. Uh, a diagonal matrix to the nth power means you take nth power to each eigenvalues, all right? So you get that. And then, since all of these have P and P inverse outside, you can factor that out so that you have P, P inverse outside, and you have sigma, n equals to 0 through infinity, of, let's do this, uh, it's, 1 over n factorial, 8 to the n, t to the n. 1 over n factorial, negative 4 to the n, t to the n. 0 and 0. But the sum of this is exactly the... Taylor series of e to the 8t. Would you agree, right? Because that's same as 8t to the nth power. So that's the Taylor series of e to the 8t. And then some of this is exactly the Taylor series of e to the negative 4t. OK? So we see that this is same as that, OK? Which means now you have to rewrite this as p times e to the 8t, 0, 0, 
e to the negative 4t times p inverse times 20, 16. Okay. All right, so uh, by now, it, it, you kind of see the point, right? You, you, you just have to multiply this and you're done. But since we've done so much work, it will be a pity if I don't finish this, okay? And we already know the solution of this because we solved it in the previous, in, in the beginning, so we can even solve this and, and compare them. Okay. All right, so let's erase all this. Let's now compute P inverse. So first P is 1, negative 1, and 7, 5. Those are the two eigenvectors, right? So that's your P. What is P inverse then? P inverse is 1 times 5 minus negative 1 times 7, so it's plus 7. Switch 1 and 5, so it's 5 and 1. And then you negate these, so it's positive 1 and negative 7. So that this is 1 over 12. And you get 5, negative 7, 1, 1. OK. And our goal is to first compute this separately, this separately, and then we'll, uh, you know what? Uh, you know, let, let's compute this first, and then this, and then this, all right? So let's see if that gives us anything. Right? So first, p inverse times 20 and 16. This is the same thing as 1 over 12, 5, negative 7, 1, 1, and then 20 and 16. Now you do across down, across down. 5 times 20 is 100. 7 times 16 is, what's that? What is it? One, 112? Yeah, it's 112, right? So if you do 100 minus 112, that's uh, negative 12. And then 1 times 20 plus 1 times 16, that's uh, 36. And then you're dividing by 12. So that's going to be negative 1 and 3. OK. Yeah, that looks familiar. OK, then what? Then we have p times e to the 8t, 0, 0 e to the negative 4t, times negative 1 and 3. So now let's multiply across, down, across, down. And that gives you p times e to the at with the minus. And then this times this times this would give you 3 times e to the negative 4t. But what was p? It was these eigenvectors, right? 1, negative 1, and 7, 5. And this times this gives you negative e to the 8t plus 21 e to the negative 4t. Do you recognize this solution? Right? It was our original one, right? And negative 1 times negative e to the 8t is positive e to the 8t. 5 times 3, that's 15 e to the negative 4t. So we do recover the exact same solution we've found in the beginning of this lecture, all right? So that's it.